For many Americans, the dream of a secure and comfortable retirement is fading. We have a retirement crisis looming in this country. Uh, millions of Americans will retire into poverty. What people have talked about traditionally is the idea of having a three-legged stool. And typically that means you have Social Security, then individuals would have a pension from their employer, and then they'd have their own individual savings. If so many firefighters don't receive Social Security in any event, the, the three-legged stool doesn't even apply. Their modest public pension is all they have to keep them out of poverty in retirement. The importance of it to me is, is long-term. That's what I have to live on, you know, 20, 30 years down the road when I'm done is the pension. We don't have Social Security. A lot of people may not know that. To maintain their living standards, a household needs 75% of their income in retirement. The median household income in the U.S. is $51,017. So a household earning the median would need an annual retirement income of $38,263. To receive that income with cost of living increases and a surviving spouse benefit, you'd have to save $897,874 if you don't have a defined benefit retirement plan or Social Security. But most households aren't even close. And the median family, that's the family right smack in the middle of America in terms of their income, has only $3,000 in a retirement account. For firefighters and paramedics, defined benefit retirement plans are a lifeline. A defined benefit pension is a lifetime guarantee that after I retire that I'm going to receive a check every single month. It's money that I've invested. Very large parts of my wages go into that pension system. And when I walk away, it, it gives me a dignified retirement that I know I can live every month off of. Defined benefit retirement plans also provide disability benefits for firefighters who are injured and death benefits for the families of those killed in the line of duty. Defined benefit retirement plans are really deferred wages. Every payday, firefighters and paramedics put part of their paychecks into their retirement plan and accept lower pay in exchange for having a defined benefit when they retire. I pay more into my retirement than uh, the general public pays into Social Security. Defined benefit retirement plans are neither a handout nor a luxury. They are part of the compensation for firefighters in a job where a career-ending injury or death prior to retirement is a real possibility. And retirement at an early age is a necessity. Firefighters are limited in terms of how long they can work, uh, so it makes having a secure retirement all the more important. But that hasn't stopped Wall Street bankers from trying to profit on the retirement savings of firefighters. There is a concerted ideological effort to undermine public pensions, to eliminate public pensions. There are billionaires who are spending literally tens of millions of dollars to eliminate public pensions across the country. So John Arnold is one major factor, but it doesn't end with John Arnold. The Koch brothers, the Americans for Prosperity, Alec, it was pretty much out of the ALEC playbook. It was to, you know, minimize benefits, put new folks in either a cash balance plan or a defined contribution plan, to declare that our funds were irreparable, none of which is true. All of these organizations are funded by uh, billionaires who, who, who have no uh, worry in the world when it comes to retirement. They have their billions to rely on, but they are ideologically bent on eliminating public pensions, and it's, it's very dangerous. This line of attack is not, not only meant to undermine public workers, but runs the risk of leaving firefighters and teachers and sanitation workers in poverty. Contrary to misinformation popularized in today's politically charged environment, most public defined benefit retirement plans are doing fine. Over the long term, no one has to have this plan be 100% funded on any one given day. That's one of the benefits of defined benefit plans. If a plan's about 80% funded, it's in a reasonably good place to be sustainable over the long term. And if it's moving towards that, it's gonna be in good shape. The few plans that are troubled got that way for one big reason. It's because politicians failed to pay into the system year after year. 
funding corporate tax subsidies or whatever other priority they might have other than the retirement of our firefighters and our public workers. And when they've taken, like they did in New Hampshire, these pension holidays, which the employers didn't pay what they were supposed to pay, when the bill comes due, they don't want to pay it. Uh, we're willing to, to, to keep our promise. We're just asking the city to fulfill theirs. Every state and municipality gives away literally millions, and in some cases, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in corporate subsidies, uh, in tax breaks, in loopholes. And it is fundamentally dishonest to say that you can't fund one thing because you're funding the public pensions of, of, of firefighters. Just part of the political game that's being played to grab what we've built and take that trust that we've built in our systems and um, basically rob our pension systems of what we've built. Attacks on public safety retirement plans hurt injured firefighters who can't get Social Security disability benefits and widows and orphans who will not receive survivor benefits. Defined benefit retirement plans are the only way to protect those who choose this dangerous but vitally important profession. Most Americans have some modest disability covers through Social Security. So again, for those firefighters who don't have Social Security, it's critically important that that defined benefit plan provide disability and survivor benefits. Plus, defined benefit retirement plans cost less to administer. You can deliver in a defined benefit plan the same level of benefits in a defined contribution plan, but in the defined benefit plan, you can deliver those benefits for 46% less of a cost. By contrast, 401ks and other defined contribution plans cost participants much more, force workers to bear all the risk, and leave many retirees high and dry. You hope like crazy that you've chosen a good investment model so that you get a high rate of return. And you hope like crazy that the market is really high. And you hope like crazy that the market is not really low when you decide to retire, because that's what your future is based on. Because defined benefit plans pull their money and institutionally invest, the rates of return are about 8.9% on average over 25 years. But in individual accounts, uh, workers uh, may or may not make their own decisions on how to invest that money uh, without the expertise, perhaps, of the public pension funds and often receive much less a rate of return. My pension fund has a lot of money and they can go, uh, as a, a large institution, go and uh, invest money in funds that I can't invest in. Because defined benefit retirement plans are so superior to 401ks, they ensure that our communities are protected by the best public safety professionals in the world. If individuals are covered by a defined benefit plan, it is extremely powerful in recruiting and retaining the people who are covered by defined benefit plans. If we uh, reduce our pension benefit, then we are no longer in the, in the position of attracting that talent to our profession. Defined benefit retirement plans are also good for taxpayers, our communities, and our economy. When individuals receive an income in a defined benefit plan, they get that check each month. They know that check is going to come. And our organization did an analysis. What we found is because those retirees in their communities were spending their paychecks, their spending actually generated a trillion dollars in economic activity in towns all across America. And in particular, that also helped to make sure that there were six and a half million people still able to work in jobs supported by that spending. Because we are a part of a pension system, after we do retire, we're still going to be able to contribute to this, the economic climate of any community that we live in. Uh, we're not going to be kicked to the social system. For all of these reasons, voters want firefighters and other public safety professionals to keep their retirement plans. What the public really tells us is they understand, because we've asked them specifically about firefighters, police officers. These people have hazardous jobs. Is it important for them to have a plan that enables them to retire when they need to retire? Resounding majority, absolutely. 
Despite this public support, there's another threat. Instead of switching to 401ks, some politicians waging war on defined benefit plans are proposing other schemes that sound more reasonable, but could be just as harmful. In some places, politicians would like to mix a part 401k plan with a defined benefit plan as part of their answer, uh, which is equally dangerous because it opens the door uh, ultimately to close the defined benefit plan and move entirely to a defined contribution plan. Typically what we're finding is when they've switched to these defined contribution plans, individuals will not have enough money. With the proposed cash uh, balance hybrid system, it doesn't have a very good safety net for people in those first few years before they get vested in the system to make sure that they are covered in the event that they do get harmed in the line of duty. The real tell is that the politicians who want to switch firefighters to defined contribution, cash balance, or hybrid plans don't switch their own plans. Virtually every politician is, is covered by a defined benefit plan, but that doesn't stop their ideological attack on new workers or current workers. Politicians are guilty of hypocrisy. So what's the way forward? How do we solve America's retirement crisis and ensure that our nation's first responders can retire with dignity? We do it by strengthening defined benefit retirement plans as the best way, indeed the only way, to achieve this vital goal. There is no better system, no better way to provide retirement security. And unfortunately, some places took pension holidays that weren't as short as they thought they were going to be when they started. That one year turned into two and turned into three, and in some cases, several more. So there's been, when you don't make your full contribution into a defined benefit plan as the employer, that catches up with you. You know, no longer can a politician say we can't fund firefighters' retirement because we have to pave our roads or make our class sizes smaller, and all the while they're giving out millions of dollars in corporate subsidies. I mean, it's fundamentally untrue, and we need to call them on it. Even the Pew Foundation's own research shows that troubled public retirement plans got that way because the state or local government did not pay what it owed. There are some places like Florida and Wisconsin where politicians faithfully paid into the system and those systems are fully funded. And that's the, that's the fundamental difference. That's why the solution could not be more clear. Employers must make their required contributions on time. The employees' contribution to those pension systems typically are mandated in the law. And those monies are taken out of the employees' checks in full every single time they get a paycheck. Employers must be subject to the same mandate. Full funding by employers. Small adjustments to fix any remaining shortfalls. That's what it takes to ensure that America's first responders can retire in dignity after answering the call to serve their communities and save people's lives.